Well, it's been about a year since the really spectacular hydrothermal explosion at Black Diamond Pool and Biscuit Basin here in Yellowstone National Park. Now that event threw material hundreds of feet high and it ejected 1,500 rocks that were a foot or more across. Fortunately, most of those rocks went towards the river, not towards the boardwalk, so no one was injured. But the boardwalk was eventually destroyed by falling debris and the area remains closed. We've learned an awful lot in the year since that event. By looking at the rocks that came out, we can see that the explosion seems to have been caused by a sealing of the system. Now, all of this water that's coming up is really full of a lot of minerals. As they drop out, they clog up the plumbing system and that can allow pressure to build at pretty shallow levels, really just beneath the surface, and an explosion is an inevitable result. Since that time, it looks like Black Diamond has started having relatively small eruptions every so often. We saw hints of this in the temperature record and seismic and in acoustic recordings. There were only two eyewitness reports though. Some geologists in November witnessed a small muddy eruption that went up a few feet and a tour group saw the same thing in January. So we couldn't really match up the instrumental record with the visual observations until mid-May when YVO installed a webcam overlooking Black Diamond Pool. And that if webcam caught its first eruption on May 31st. A muddy eruption of, of water went up 20 or 30 feet or so. And by matching that to the temperature record, we can get an idea of what Black Diamond has done over the last year. And it looks like it's had eruptions every few days to weeks. There's no real pattern to how often these eruptions occur. There's no precursors. So the area remains closed because of the damage to the boardwalk and these unexpected eruptions. But just this week, we installed another monitoring system here in Black Diamond area in Biscuit Basin that has seismic monitoring, acoustic monitoring, a GPS station, and a weather station. So there'll be a lot more hydrothermal monitoring here in Biscuit Basin. It'll also be able to get all of the activity in Upper Geyser Basin. But looks like the new normal of activity in Black Diamond Pool may be these small eruptions, which also characterize the system in the mid-2000s to 2010s. You know what else is normal in Yellowstone? Animal behavior. There have been these weird internet reports that the animals are all leaving Yellowstone. Just not true. It started out as a bit of a joke on social media. It seems to have been taken a bit seriously, but just like before, when these rumors tend to circulate, the animals are enjoying the summer in Yellowstone, not leaving the park. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk about what happened over the past month in terms of earthquake activity, ground deformation, and geyser eruptions. It was another quiet month in terms of seismicity in the Yellowstone National Park region. The University of Utah seismograph stations located just 52 earthquakes during the month of July. The largest was a magnitude 2.8 that was located about 10 miles to the northeast of West Yellowstone, Montana. That occurred on July 30th. Seismicity was more or less distributed around the region, and this is background for the Yellowstone National Park area. In terms of ground deformation, this is vertical deformation at the Hayden Valley site, which is in the east side of the caldera on the Sour Creek Resurgent Dome. The entire plot spans two years, and each blue dot is one day of data. Overall, the caldera has been subsiding since 2015 and 2016, and that's interrupted in the summer months by a pause or a slight amount of uplift due to changing groundwater conditions. You can see that we were mostly subsiding up until late May, and then a small amount of uplift began again due to that seasonal signal from groundwater. So far, we've seen about one centimeter. That's less than half an inch of uplift due to that seasonal signal. And now turning to the tallest geyser in the world, Steamboat Geyser, in Norris Geyser Basin. This is the temperature measured in the geyser's outflow channel over the month of July. All of these up and down signals are just daily temperature variations, and the fuzziness that's superimposed on that is due to sporadic minor eruptions of the geyser. Sometimes they get a bit more intense and then fade to background. Now before major eruptions of Steamboat, we expect to see a lot of minor eruptive activity, and that sort of makes the entire plot just sort of a fuzzy line. The fact that we aren't seeing that suggests that we may still be a little ways away from another major eruption of Steamboat. There have only been two eruptions so far in 2025, so it's pretty clear that the big activity at Steamboat, which has been ongoing since 2018, is coming to a close. 
Well, that's the monthly update from the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory from Biscuit Basin. If you have any questions at all, you can feel free to email us. Our address is yvowebteam, that's all one word, at usgs.gov. We'll be coming to you next month from a new location in Yellowstone National Park. So until then, stay safe and stay healthy. Bye-bye.